are you still natty if you're using peptides? Peptides seem to be the new wave of medicine and they're seemingly a peptide to optimize every single bodily function. From tanning without ever seeing the sun or hunger control probably being the most talked about one these days in the form of Ozempic, Wagovi, or Manjaro. I asked you to hit me with all the hard questions on peptides and now I'm going to answer the juicy ones. So what combination of peptides for recovery is good and how often do you have to take them? So there is what's called the Wolverine stack because it makes you heal so much faster and that would be the combination of DPC-157. You do take that one every day and if it's the pill form, then you take it orally of course. If it's the injection, you inject it where it hurts. Me, because I have tendonitis, I will tend to put it around this general area over here. You can also get TB500, that one is also subcutaneous, and you take that one twice a week. Some protocol may have you taken it every day, but it always depends on the dose. And then there has been some new studies about using the GHKCU, which is what I've been using for my loose skin and stretch marks, but in higher doses can actually lead to uh, tissue and cellular regeneration. So that's definitely something to look into. Have you experienced any side effects from them? Honestly, I haven't. Um, I was getting really, really dizzy for a bit every time I stood up and I was going to do what's called an elimination method, which is you take one out at a time, do that for about a week and you evaluate to see how your body responds. The first one I took, because that's the one that I thought was the biggest suspe uh, suspect, was my Cialis. And after taking out my Cialis for about two weeks, I completely stopped being dizzy, which makes sense because it's a vasodilator and every time I stood up, I experienced what's called orthostatic hypotension, which means essentially you stand up and you want to fall down. <laughs> now, whether that's because it was too high of a dose or because I've been in a very large deficit for the last 10 months and I'm in full body prep building mode now, there was a bunch of different things that could have been at play, but that was my first suspect and I was lucky to be right. Other than that though, I haven't actually had any noticeable side effects from any of the peptides and I'm on a bunch, so that says a lot. With a great next leading question, are they dangerous? Well, like anything in this world, too much of anything is not a good thing. And yes, that does include peptides. If you take too high doses, you will start experiencing side effects, some of which can be obviously worse than others. But before you start to demonize them, but remember that if you eat too many crushed apple seeds, you might get cyanide poisoning. <laughs> so too much of anything in this world is not good. And now, you know, in my nursing days, we were taught very early in our pharmacology classes that obviously the higher the dosages that you take of anything, um, medicine related, the higher the chances of side effects and of the worsening of those side effects. And then of course, the more compounds you take, the more chances of having those medical pharmacology interactions between different compounds. Now in this case, like I said, I haven't experienced any, but I'm sure that for some other people, maybe they might have. So on their own, I would say no, peptides aren't dangerous. The, probably the most dangerous part of them would be the actual injection process, in which case if you're not trained how to do it properly you could either injure yourself or cause an infection but other than that peptides are not dangerous and that's why having a specialist in this field guiding you through the proper slow titration of the doses will be very important because then you'll get to figure out what actually works for you instead of trying to get the max results by using the max dosing which usually doesn't end up well because like anything else there is always that diminishing return how much do peptides cost? Well, it really depends on the compounds. I can tell you for sure that some compounds like let's say DPC-157 will be fairly cheap versus uh, another one like Tessamorelin that is FDA approved for HIV patients in the helping of removal of visceral fat will be considerably more expensive. And then obviously, depending on the dose that you'll be taking, that can also play a part because you might need more medication over a period of time. Can you only take peptides with a needle? So I did an Instagram video where I called it my seven needles a day, and that stirred up a lot of questions. Now, a lot of peptides are actually offered in the oral form, but because I have a compromised ga uh, gastrointestinal tract due to my Crohn's disease, I figured that going the full injection route would be better for me to avoid my lack of absorption through my gastro tract. But this doesn't only apply to people with, let's say, Crohn's disease, but let's say somebody who's a very heavy bulimic that's been uh, purging quite a bit, and of course, the same concept, they have maybe some scarring, some bleeding in their gastrointestinal tract, or maybe some injuries, um, that could obviously also play a part in absorption. But no, I know there are a lot of peptides that are available either in pill form or in a cream form, like the GHKCU cream version that I use to help with my stretch marks and my loose skin. Speaking of loose skin, something for excess skin. 
Well, whether you're just fat like I was, or maybe you were pregnant and lost all the baby weight, and now you're stuck with some nasty stretch marks and a lot of loose skin. Something like GHKCU and NAD Plus will be very good for you. So GHKCU will make your body create a wild amount of collagen, and this will help tighten your skin and make the stretch marks lighter. And this one, I actually use both in injection and in cream version. And then the NAD Plus, will help fortify your skin against stressors and help with cell rejuvenation. And then you put those two things together, and I mean, I'm, I feel like I'm kind of a living proof now where I should have a lot more loose skin than I actually have after losing 140 plus pounds in less than 10 months. And my stretch marks have actually gotten considerably lighter over time. And that one's definitely going to warrant its own full YouTube video in about four months once I'm done my own self-study on these products so I can deliver the most accurate results. Before we keep going, I am currently eight weeks out of this bodybuilding show. We are down 142 pounds. If you could give me a follow, that would be amazing. Like the video. If you're still watching, just write anything in the comments. Throw me a smiley face, something, any emoji, that'd be amazing. Just so I can see that you're still here. The goal would be to try to hit 50,000 by Christmas in terms of subscribers. I think it might be possible because we have some wild collabs coming. But until then, back to the video. Are peptides as dangerous as steroids? Absolutely not. Peptides is something that occurs naturally in your body. It's just a chain of amino acids, unlike Tren. The way you should see peptides is that when a certain peptide gets to a saturation point, it will act as the on or off switch to optimize something in your body. So when GHKCU reaches saturation, it will increase collagen reduction. When IGF-1 reaches saturation, it will reduce the amount of glucose that can make it through the cell's barriers and thus increasing fat burning and muscle building. And if you take Ozempic, reaches saturation, you aren't hungry anymore. Versus steroids, now let's say we'll take Trent as an example here, where your body will start an ungodly amount of protein synthesis, meaning that every single muscle being used will grow, including the ones that shouldn't, like your heart. And that's bad news. Do you have to stay on them forever? And if you stop, will you lose the gains? That's the beauty of peptides because no you don't and no you won't. So as per different studies, peptides should be cycled on and off. And the reason is that like any other exogenously brought in compound, eventually your body will start producing antibodies, reducing its efficiency. So different researches for different peptides show different results, but essentially what you should remember is anywhere between 10 to 15 weeks. That's how long it's gonna take for your body to start producing these antibodies. And the problem is that if those antibodies reach too high of a point, that peptide might not work for you anymore. So you should definitely have yourself some sort of protocol calendar and make sure to follow that religiously to make sure that you can keep cycling them off and on to keep having those results. Because if you don't, then the only way sometimes that you can get those results again is if you absolutely crank those doses. And that can be very bad news because that's when you can start getting those side effects. And as an example, uh, I've heard some horror stories where if you were taking a dose of IGF-1 that was really, really, really too high, that could lead to some pancreatic issues, which could ultimately potentially lead you to diabetes. So not something you wanna play with. And the difference between peptides versus steroids here where you will lose all the gains from steroids after finishing off your cycle is that with peptides, it's actually just increasing your own body's natural ability to create new muscle tissue and not 75 times faster due to steroid use causing you to pretty much put your liver in a trash can. And you don't lose any of the gains that you get from peptides. Summarize the difference between steroids and peptides in one sentence. Oh, well, that's a good one. Peptide optimizes your body to perform at its peak natural potential versus steroids redlines every system in your body to push performance past its natural potential. Uh, what stack are you on? Well, <laughs> currently I'm on testosterone due to the fact that I have no testicular activity due to an injury in my past. I'm on terzepatide to help suppress my hunger during the bodybuilding prep. GHQCU, I'm on both the cream and the injection to help with my stretch marks and with the loose skin. Uh, BPC-157, it helps with my body's inflammation and helps me heal some of those tissues like in the tendons and ligaments for my tendinitis. I will be starting TB500 very shortly. Those two together, like I spoke about earlier, works very well. Um, IGF-1 LR3 helps protect my muscle during this crazy aggressive weight cut that I've been doing for the past little bit. I'm taking DHACA and Preg uh, to help my body convert my total test into free testosterone so that it can actually be used properly because my free test levels were actually very low. Tessamorelin, it helps with my sleep and it makes my body produce 
more of its endogenous human growth hormone, which obviously helps with pretty much every other system in my body. Uh, and I'm taking glutathione at the moment, which is the most powerful antioxidant known to man. And it just essentially protects your organs while you're doing something as stupid as a bodybuilding show. And I just started taking NAD plus as of today. Uh, I'll talk about it more later when I know how well it works. Is it like SARMs and does it affect long-term health? It is definitely not like SARMs at all. Um, SARMs are selective androgen receptor modulators, if I remember correctly. And those play a lot with your hormones and your ability for your bodies to produce and use hormones. Peptides don't do that. And for long-term health. Now, obviously this is a new wave of medication. There are some longer term uh, researches. Um, I know that obviously Ozempic has been around for quite much longer than we think. Uh, just because the Kardashians started talking about it recently doesn't mean it was new. <laughs> Hypothetically, if you were to stay on Ozempic for too long at too high dosages, and that's the key word here, there are the chances of having some gastric motility issues. Or I know that if you, again, take too high doses of IGF for too long, that can play with your insulin sensitivity. Thus comes the importance of working with people who know what they're talking about, talking to your doctor about it, and really doing it as safely as possible, like any other medication. Where do you even start? That's a good one. You let somebody with the knowledge guide you in a conversation to help create a protocol that's right for you. And that's where Transcend comes in. Now, Transcend is a telehealth service that will help you with connecting you with one of their wellness specialists. I'll have a link in the bio. If, all you have to do is fill out the form and, th and they'll get in contact with you. After which, when you have a conversation about your goals, then they will help build a plan that is right for you. Because something that is right for you might not be right for some others if you have some sort of underlying medical condition. If you have thyroid issues, if you have diabetes, your doses won't be the same as me because I don't have those issues. Oh, this is a really good one. Can a guy like me use it for fat loss even if I am at staying in a caloric deficit? Peptides are not a magic solution to your problems and they definitely won't do the work for you. And that's when it gets really important to have every aspect of your life dialed in. Now, these peptides can help you dial it in, especially the hunger suppressant ones like the uh, Zempic, Manjaro, or Ragovi, those will help you stay in a caloric deficit to help you lose the weight. Now, of course, if you don't fix your mental while you're doing all these crazy changes, chances are you're just gonna bounce back and get a whole lot worse than you were before you even started. I would say that if you are interested in peptide therapy, it's definitely something that could help, but you also need to do the work and you need to be ready to help yourself. You said you're using one for loose skin, can women use it too, and which one is it? I've talked about it a couple times so far, it's the GHKCU, the NAD Plus combination, those two are great for that. Yes, women can use it as well. There's also this new line of products called exosomes, which I've yet to do my research on, so I'm not going to talk about them too much here, but apparently these are absolutely insane. They're very expensive, but they work crazy. It's a one dose medication, and apparently it's supposed to do wonders. I will do more research and I will get back to you on that. Hell, who knows? I might even try them myself and let you know. <laughs> that seems to be the theme around here these days. If you're not sponsored by Transcend in the future, where would you get your Triz? I would still get it from Transcend just because they've been amazing with me and they, they've been able to titrate me to a dose that works. And I know that if I have to make changes, I would like to speak with someone that's very competent on the matter instead of putting my health at risk. And now for the one you probably came here for, are you still natty if you use peptides? Probably not. I mean, these are exogenous compounds that will let your body reach its own natural potential, but they definitely won't do the work for you. I sort of see peptides as a better form of supplements that actually work. And not only that, but by optimizing my body, even while cutting this hard, my blood laps have never been this good before. And that just says something. So if I had to choose between some social construct of being labeled as a natty athlete or choose to be healthy, I'm gonna choose health every single time, every single day. And that's it for today. If you have any more questions about peptides, please leave them in comments. Hell, I might throw another one of these videos later on if we get more interesting comments or questions. Uh, there's a link to Transcend in the bottom. All you have to do is fill out the form out of pure transparency. I do get supported when you guys use that form. But other than that, hope you all have an amazing day.